Hello everyone and welcome to this new video of Solo Engineer. Uh, today we will talk about how to convert this Altium Designer project into a CST project uh, where we can import this PCB and run some analysis, some RF analysis on these traces. Uh, so here, for example, is just a 50 ohm trace on a four layer uh, PCB FR4. Um, I used this uh, Saturn PCB design tool to get my um, my trace width uh, to get as close as possible to 50 ohm uh, given uh, the, the, the stack up I'm going to use. So the stack up I'm going to use is from um, PCB way. Um, I have four PCB, uh, four layer PCB of total 1.6 millimeter thickness. Um, and as we can see here, my um, my uh, pre-preg is the 7628 and with um, with a dielectric of 4.74 uh, with a thickness after lamination of uh, 0 0.8 uh, 1855 millimeter so I use these numbers and I put them in, in the solver here um, and I used a uh, coplanar wave um, to get closer to my 50 ohm it's not exactly 50 ohm but it's gonna be uh, good enough I just want to run some simulation in CST um, so my conductor width is 12 mils um, and as we can see here, um, this is my conductor width here. And I want to know um, for my SMA connector that has a wider uh, pin, I want to know how is this going to impact my performance at higher frequencies. And so as you can see here, my coplanar uh, starts right here. My coplanar is really um, much wider here because I'm not able to get my 50 ohms. Uh, there's other techniques to get it uh, and I want to simulate it and see how it performs um, and, and for uh, reference this is uh, about um, 20 millimeter from this uh, SMA to the out to the output and I also wanted to go through a via so this trace is on the top plane and it goes through a via at the, the bottom on the other side here and I want to know how is this going to affect my uh, impedance, how it's going to affect my, affect my uh, insertion loss. So uh, let's jump in right here. Um, so in Altium, you can design your circuit just as usual. Uh, so as, uh, as I said earlier, this is a four metal layer um, PCB. So the first layer, I used it to draw my coplanar uh, trace. And then I use a ground plane with um, shielding vias around it to to provide better performance and you can also simulate that with and without in CST and you'll notice that with a shielding like that helps a lot uh, to maintain a 50 ohm impedance and reduce the uh, insertion loss. Then my, um, my second metal layer is just fully ground, my third metal layer is also a plane, a ground plane and then my bottom layer um, is also acting as a ground plane and I have uh, the same uh, trace here, uh, my um, 50 ohm trace uh, with the same clearance. So again, my clearance is 12 mil. My trace width is, tw uh, is 12 mils, and so this g g should give me pretty good uh, 50 ohms. You also notice that I use the teardrop around the um, the connections, and that also improves the the the, the 50 ohm. So I use teardrop here and teardrop around the via here. So let's say this is your design and you want to simulate in um, CST. So you want to know the RF performance over frequency and have pretty good results. So one thing you got to uh, do first is make sure that your stack manager is already set up like your, pri your PCB is going to be manufactured because uh, this will be imported in CST and if all your settings are correct, then you don't, ha you don't have to do any modification in CST. So in my uh, stack up here, I have my pre-preg of 7.7 .7 mil, of 4.7 of a dielectric constant with um, some loss tangent here of 0.02. And that's based on um, the, the pre-preg that was given by uh, PCB way. I just looked online, what is the, last engine of this pre-preg and that was I, I got it was 0.02 uh, 
then uh, make sure the thickness are correct so like if you used um, so this 7.7 .7 mil is is the most critical one because we our impedance going to be between the top layer and the second layer uh, for the most part the other part is going to be between this fourth layer and the bottom layer uh, so it's the same in my case because it's a symmetric um, stack up and then um, the core has to be the correct height so in total uh, we get to 62 mil, which is about 1.6 millimeter um, overall PCB thickness. So if all these settings are correct, correctly set up, then we can go. Then we can go ahead and export our design. Um, I usually go ahead and and export with um, OBD plus plus because then it also exports um, all the different my stack up and all the different layers. And it's easy to import then in um, in CST. So you can keep all that by default. So I didn't change anything here. Uh, you just create an output file and an output job file, and then you select OBD plus uh, plus. Keep everything by default. Make sure all the layers are selected. Click OK, and then click Generate Content. Okay, so now in CST Studio, so I have uh, CST open. So let's open a new project. Uh, 3D simulation high frequency here um, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our units are correct otherwise the software is going to complain about it so just set your dimension to millimeter click OK and then we can go ahead and modeling and import from 2D uh, file OBD++ and then from and usually it's a zip file and that's what we want to do because then it's gonna unzip it um, and, and see so we can see there's a utility here um, that opens up in my case I don't want to import the components uh, maybe you want to do that to put some ports on your component uh, in my case I just want to import a PCB itself so I can uncheck import components here and then click OK so as you can see right away it just imported my PCB I can use control and uh, the left click on my mouse to rotate the board and as we can see, it's a four layer PCB, just like in Altium. And it kept the, um, the dimension, so the thickness across my uh, the different layers. And that is coming from Altium. So if you didn't set up it correctly, and you don't see these layers uh, with the, the gaps that you can see here, it means that uh, you didn't set it up correctly in Altium. And I would just recommend that you set it up correctly in Altium instead of trying to do it in, in CST um, Studio. So yeah so this is our PCB um, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, from the material here just remove or not remove but hide the FR4 so then I can select uh, the different planes to put my crowns and everything so I can go ahead here and first set up my simulation um, so frequency let's say I want to uh, simulate from 0 to uh, 5 gigahertz I click OK and then um, I can set up my background so in my background I'm just gonna use a normal type uh, which means it's air uh, the perfect conductor I'm not using that one so normal and as you can see property epsilon of 1 and mu of 1 basically just ideal air um, yeah apply close and usually I used to set boundaries um, the way I set up boundaries is I use an all directions here and I would use open and add space so you can see I have an open space around my PCB and um, I would set it to four or two times a uh, fraction of the wavelength so just just because I want some air uh, act like a PCB in, in the air as much as I as much as much as possible so it uh, represent the reality um, so now I'm gonna put my ports so I'm just gonna pick here and then select the ground plane underneath here as you can see it, it did select the top surface of my ground plane and then I'm gonna select again and choose the edge of my uh, trace here the, the the lower edge here and then once my plane and my edge is selected I'm gonna put a discrete port here so as you can see it creates a port the width of my trace up to the ground plane and then so that's I press OK here so I have one port here and the other port I want to have it 
at the end of my trace on the other side here. So I'm going to do the same thing here. So select the ground plane first and then select um, select the edge here. And here as you can see it's the curve and it just selected half of it so I'm going to select again and select this trace here. So I have two curve um, uh, edge and then I'm going to put discrete port again and it, you can see it creates a uh, discrete port from my ground plane up to the edge, uh, the rounded edge of my trace here. And this is just because Altium creates a um, rounded uh, edge trace. But as you can see, it's, it still works pretty well. So I have my ports. I have my frequency set up. What else? I can go back here and I just want to do a frequency domain solver. Um, and uh, maybe I want to look at the H field, let's say at 2.5 gigahertz. Uh, click apply, click OK. OK, no, cancel. And then I can just hit and run the simulation here. All right, so the simulation is over. Uh, so let's look at the results real quick, make sure it all makes sense. Uh, if we look at the S21, which is the insertion loss from the port 2 to the port 1, um, sorry, from port 1 to port 2. Um, so we look here and it's um, up to 2 gigahertz, it's point, uh, point 0.5 dB insertion loss, which is not that good. Uh, that trace could be improved and we can look at it uh, on the Smith chart here from the input impedance perspective and the output impedance perspective as well here. So we see that it's not really focused into uh, the 50 ohm. So that 50 ohm is not probably not um, well designed and then we can go back in Altium Designer to improve it. Uh, so this was just the step to follow that I want to share with you so you, you know how to export from Altium and import into CST uh, to run some s parameter simulation um, and we can also look at the H field um, like I said uh, before, we would have to go here, 2D, and then it loads. And then we can use the, I like to use the contour here and animate, and then we can use this like that. So we can see that the, um, the shielding, so the, the, the shielding vias really uh, does the job because they allow to maintain the signal within the, the coplanar wave. And then if we look at the other side, similar thing here. So this is at 2.5 gigahertz, and uh, all the signal is contained within the first uh, top and, and ground layer. So nothing is really happening between, below these two traces, because the, the ground re, uh, act as a return path, and then um, all the signal is contained here. So this video was just to show you how to export and import with Altium and CST. Hope you, you learned something and uh, found it helpful. Uh, don't forget to like the video and uh, subscribe and we'll have more videos in the future. Thank you.